what the next topic here is about the lab that I've handed out. So let's take a look at the requirements for the lab. You have given, you've been, you know, you have been given the topology here, right? You have routers and switches. What you know is how to configure interfaces, passwords, from console to VTY to uh, the secret password and all of that. What you don't know is, uh, or as of right now, what, you have, what we have not covered is how to configure switches, and we will learn that. Also here, uh, we have what we call loopback addresses. So the first thing I'm going to cover right now is loopback addresses and when we use them and what they are. Next, I'm going to go into OSPF and explain to you how OSPF is configured and why it is configured that way. And then we're going to go a bit into switches. So before you can do the lab, we're going to talk for about 40 minutes. All right. So what is a loopback address? When I tell you to configure loopback, what is a loopback address? These are physical addresses, OK? We have the Ethernet. We have the serial. Everybody understands <coughs> that Ethernet goes to my local area network. Serial connection connects me to wide area network technologies, right? Oftentimes, we configure our devices remotely. And so I am not there in your location, at your location to tell you to add another physical connection onto your device. So what do I do? I know that I have access and I'm managing your router from my location. So what I do is I'll, we call that, I'll hang a loopback. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a virtual interface, okay? Not a physical, but a logical interface, and we call that a loopback, L-O, L-O, loopback. And so I can add an L-O-0, L-O-1, L-O-2, as many loopback addresses as I desire. What you'll find here on topology, if you look at the lab, you see the ISP, I am telling you to go ahead and add a loopback What step is that? OK, fourth one. Configure a loopback interface on R2 to simulate the ISP. Is that, does that make sense now? You don't have a router for the ISP. All you have is a loopback interface. So when I tell you to add a loopback, one, whenever you want to simulate a host that you don't want to physically connect, because you may not have the device, or you're not there, or you don't have the time to do that. For testing purposes, you just add that virtual link. What you need to remember is that loopback addresses are always up and up. Be very careful. Remember how most interf well, not all physical interfaces are down and down by default? A loopback address does not require you to issue a no shut command. It is up. So because it is up, and any kind of election process we're going to talk about next, keep that in mind. So one, I use a loopback interface so that I can simulate another device. It's a logical interface. Next, if I configure OSPF, so we're going to go into OSPF first. I have an election process for OSPF, and for that, loopbacks play a major role as well. So write that in your notes that loopbacks are participating in the election process. Any questions on loopbacks? You give it an IP address, and that's all you need to do. And if you do an extended ping, you can test it, right? Because It shows you as, a, as an actual interface on the router, right? So that's information about loopbacks. Next, I'm going to talk to you about OSPF. So 
We talked about distance vector and link state routing protocols. We said that distance vector routing protocols were RIP and IGRP. And we said that there were some disadvantages concerning distance vector routing protocols. What were they? Fantastic. Limited number of ops. Yes. Excellent point right there, right? Periodic updates. Periodic updates. They come up every 30 seconds for RIP, every 60 seconds for IGRP, and broadcast their entire routing table. Right. So that in itself is an efficient way of sharing your topology. Okay. So link state routing protocols, on the other hand, they do not come up periodically and update. The only time the only time a link state routing protocol is going to send an update is if a route goes down. All right? So let's say A loses the connection to this network. This route is gone. Now, because it's a topology change, it is going to trigger a to update the routing tables of the other routers. Does that make sense? So it is not sending updates every 30 seconds or 60 seconds. It is going to do the update only when there's a topology change. So that's the most important benefit of link state routing protocols such as OSPF. Yes? Much more intelligent. Instead of hearsay, it says, I will be quiet. And if there's a change, they're going to email it to me. Yeah. The kind of coworker you want. So here's what you remember with router rip, you did what? You did router rip. We used version 2, so you specified that. And then you did no. Right? And then what did you do? Which networks? Right? The networks that you are directly connected to. And if you forgot to type in no auto summary, what happened? Nobody was going to listen to you. If your interfaces didn't have IPs, what did you see? Nothing. Right? During the midterm, I think it was, it was good to see, well, it's not working. It's not working, but you struggle through it, and you were able to, at the end, see, well, okay, yeah, now they're learning. And I think that helped you realize. Do you think that helps <coughs> to be kind of forced in that situation? Um, so, so that's what you saw. Now, with OSPF, It works the same way in that you are advertising the networks you know about. But listen up. OSPF is not going to advertise a route that is down. OK? Just because you tell it, hey, I'm connected to that network, it will ignore you until you bring that route up. Because it says, no, you don't know how to get there. That interface is down. Don't tell people something wrong. So here's how you will use OSPF. Instead of router rip, you type in router OSPF. Now, with router OSPF, you have a process ID. This process ID is simply because you can have more than one instance of OSPF, you can have more than one process ID. It goes, I think, 1 to 65,000. So if you say router OSPF 1, all you're specifying is that, hey, my process ID for this instance of OSPF is 1. Are we good? All right, next, what you do, you don't have to worry about version and or auto summary because it's a link state routing protocol. It knows that it can work with classful and classless environment. So as long as I specify on router A that I am going to talk using OSPF, that's all I need. 
what do I do next? Next, I need to advertise the networks I'm connected to. So for our case here, let's go ahead and say this is 10.00 0 slash 8.172.16.10 slash 22. 16.1.1.0 slash 30 and 192.168.10 slash 23. All right, so this is my topology. One thirty one dot one dot one dot zero slash fourteen. That's the topology. I am on router A. Tell me what networks I need to advertise. Because those are the only two I know about. If I advertise anything else, then I won't listen to those routes. So basically what we're saying is don't don't look at routes that you don't know about. You can't advertise those. Because what, what you need to think of this is that you're telling the world what you know. All right? You're telling other routers, hey, I know how to get to here and here. And that's all you know. So you want to advertise those. But the tricky part here is that with OSPF, you have areas. Why? Because you have large organizations using OSPF. So, for instance, working at Briggs & Stratton, I didn't have one area of OSPF. Within an area of OSPF, I might have had 16 routers. And then I had area 1, and area 2, and area 3, and all these other routers, because I had multiple sites, right? My headquarters was in Milwaukee. I had Rolla, Missouri site. I had Murray, Kentucky site that, that I needed to manage. So guess what? They were in their own little areas. Make sure in your notes you have that area zero in OSPF must always exist because that's the backbone, okay? OSPF area zero is the backbone, so it has to exist. So with that in mind, obviously we're getting started, so we're going to work with single area OSPF, okay? We're going to work with a single area OSPF. As you progress, you will find out that you will, before long, work with multi-area OSPF in EIGRP and so on. So what do I do here then? So I'm on router A. Let's just move this here. I'm on router A. I type in router OSPF 1 and then network. 10, 0, 0, 0, and now followed by a wildcard mask. Not a submit mask, but a wildcard mask. So it's a slash 8. Slash 8, the inverse of that is what? 0, 0, 0. 255. What's the other network I know about? Network, I know about 172, 16, 1, 